guys hello everyone so we'll be just starting with the webinar so let just wait for 2 minutes to like uh, come to wait for the all the attendees so in 2 minutes we'll be starting with the webinar okay हेलो हेलो हेयर तो वी आर जस्ट स्टार्टिंग विद द वेबिनार ओके जस्ट लेट गाइस गिव मी क्लियरली ये ये कैन हेयर यू क्लियरली ऑल राइट so i think we should start we have a lot of uh, attendees today so let's begin uh, welcome all for to our cryptocurrency and digital asset regulation in india webinar we have us with us joining uh, mr atul chatur of avce uh, entails blockchain cryptocurrency ecosystem he is the co-founder and we have uh, the co-founder for block suits mr samaksh khanna with us hey hi guys so uh, let's let's just begin with the presentation and then we'll we move on to the panel discussion for the today's agenda okay so let's start start guys so let me just give you a brief about what's bycoin so bycoin is a delhi based a digital asset exchange and a blockchain wallet platform Uh, we have been up and running since 2017s uh, 2017 we have like innovative tech and we are we are uh, global players in the cryptocurrency exchange world in india we have a lot of industry networks also all across the uh, investor networks in india and we have been recognized by major media outlets also in india for our work done in the cryptocurrency field so for today's agenda we have uh, like we will be discussing a little about crypto current state of regulations in india uh, the impact for banning cryptocurrencies in the indian economy and a few about the regulations around the world and we will be also discussing how the regulatory suggestions uh, which can be put in by all the industry experts can help us move forward forward and then we'll be moving on to the panel discussion with the esteemed panel okay so let's start so for today's uh, speakers we have i myself uh, mrs samak shamnu so i work in marketing for bycoin as i said i have mr atul with us he is a co-founder of entis blockchain and cryptocurrency ecosystem and we have with us mr samak shanna he is the co-founder of blockchains 
so as you guys all know the current crypto scenario in india even though uh, the legalities are still in a bit of a gray area but still cryptocurrency is on the rise since uh, the lockdown period and since the the supreme court allowed uh, trading of cryptocurrency as the ban was lifted by the supreme court which was placed by rbi and uh, after that only the indian market is overall uh, like going on with an head on approach for the new listings uh, in the coin listings or the blockchain investments or the traditional banking system also has uh, included the accounts and investment opportunities so overall the crypto market is on the rise in india so here are few stats uh, provided by afni about the in, uh, current state of crypto so as you guys all know almost all major international exchanges have reported a traffic increase of up to 5 to 10 times for indian users in 2020 and the registration is 2.5 times the global average of uh, 400% which was the year to year growth in the crypto industry in india and also the local exchanges have reported at 10 times Uh, increase in registration since the lockdown in 2000, in 2020 so let's look at the timeline for the crypto like crypto timeline in india so for 2013 the first exchanges started coming up and it started to gain traction in india a little bit so and from 13 to 17 there were few rbi warnings about the digital asset and the risk they uh, they have and in 2017 the uh, when the bitcoin hit an all time peak and the uh, like cryptocurrency was at the peak of its level in india so the warnings were given by ministry of finance and in 2018 only the rbi uh, came out with a circular for banning uh, and pro- for the banks to provide services to the exchanges so which which was which became a problem for uh, the crypto exchanges in india uh, in august 2019 as you all guys know the rbi came up with a sandbox regulatory sandbox framework but it excluded the uh, blockchain or cryptocurrency industry from it totally and uh, in 2020 as you guys know the ban was lifted by uh, supreme court of india and uh, the uh, supreme court called the rbi ban unconstitutional and so the banks were again allowed to like uh, collaborate or provide services to the cryptocurrency exchange exchanges and in 2020 the june june august there were a few rumors about uh, a blanket ban on uh, cryptocurrencies from the ministry of finance as of now like the reports have not been confirmed by any official but there were rumors in the like in in media and stuff so what would be actually missing if there is like uh, the if their blanket ban is supposed to go on what would be missing in india so as you guys know uh, like since the lockdown um, unemployment is uh, at a really high rate so from uh, as of april, april 2020 uh, the unemployment rate was 23.5% in india so it would be a huge uh, loss in jobs and opportunities which the indian uh, growing market can get and as you guys all know the linkedin report of 2020 came up the most emerging jobs came up to be blockchain in the industry of blockchain and cryptocurrency it was the highest rated emerging jobs in india and also the shifting of investors and startups to other nations so any startups that is coming up with blockchain or crypto in the field of cryptocurrency in india so they are most likely to move uh, to other countries if they are not getting any regulatory promises or if there is a, always a, uh, a little sword over their head so uncertainty of regulations is certainly of a, a big factor for moving big big uh, like industries from india to other parts of the world where there is a, a more lenient way uh, look out for the regulations of cryptocurrency and also if the there is a blanket ban especially the 
innovations or the tech we can't move forward with it since we can't uh, be at the base level and uh, there would be no innovation since all the tech would be banned and everything related to cryptocurrencies so let's look at the current crypto scenario of the world so here are a few countries so so like big countries like canada us they have a few regulatory uh, schemes in place for the cryptocurrency industry and like uh, chai and uh, there are no policies for many countries in africa as of now india is also a sort of loose policies as of now cause there is no fixed uh, like uh, regulations around it uh, and here you can see the regulatory framework like for which countries the the application of tax laws or uh, aml or kyc uh, which can be placed on the which have been placed by the countries governments as of now so like austria iceland israel they have placed tax laws for the cryptocurrency earnings and if any transaction happen uh, happens on the like uh, cryptocurrency exchanges the people are uh, it is all taxed and uh, as of like hong kong or luxembourg lichtenstein they have uh, aml and, uh, and anti terror financing laws for the so that the they can combat illicit activities regarding the cryptocurrencies and many countries like australia australia canada denmark they have both the am and also the taxation laws in place for the crypto industries so as you can see so israel as of now uh, uh, cryptocurrencies are taxed as an asset for bulgaria they are taxed as a financial asset so and switzerland uh, taxes as as a foreign currency so the yeah, and uh, in argentina and spain they are uh, like comes uh, they come under the regular taxation uh, slabs for them and in denmark also there is income tax and deductibles based on the income you are getting from the uh, cryptocurrencies and united kingdom also has like few corporations who pay cryptocurrency as tax or uh, individuals who pay income tax for the uh, any gain through the cryptocurrencies so what would be what would we be missing out like what would happen if like there is a good regulatory framework and policies in place for this so definitely there will be an increase of job as uh, i told you the linkedin emerging job uh, grow, uh, job profiles the blockchain and cryptocurrency they will see a huge boom in that and uh, not only the in employment rate but also the like the people who the salaries of blockchain and cryptocurrency experts are a little above the are a good pay grade in the good pay grade so that would help in increasing uh, overall the uh, economy help, help would help the economy and also the capital so if we are doing innovations and and uh, mm-hmm. if we are take, coming with new tech by researching in the industry by cryptocurrency industry so definitely there would be investments so uh, which would help not only like bring in the foreign investments attract uh, all over the world and the third is definitely the solving the local problem so as you guys know so we are in the stage of atmanirbhar bharat so it will be huge push if we can innovate and like regulate it to the extent where foreign investors come in for india and help grow the major majority of uh, like companies who can grow through this so for this we suggested a like a short short term and long term regulatory framework goals so for short term and medium term we can suggest that there should be protection through kycs and aml laws should be followed by the cryptocurrencies uh, with respect to the banks so that would not only help in the kyc aml compliance so it will help in uh, Ban, like combating illicit activities financial terrorism financially the terrorist organizations or everything related to that part of the sector and it would also help in getting the investor protection so there would be a, a lot of like scrutiny if there is a scam or people can like 
they they would be more they would feel more protected about their money the second would be bringing in legitimate crypto earnings under taxations so that would be also helpful for like since taxations would require need a background check again everything so the person would have to follow the kyc and aml compliance so it would help in like getting both the kyc compliance and investor protection since everything will be regulated and government would be a part of it and also preventing capital flight so uh, uh, by taxating it the government can also get a like piece of it and everything won't go outside the country and uh, third would definitely be uh, working with banks so banks are a big part of this system it's a fin- so financial system so uh, working in g- good terms with them or having a better compliance from their side and our side would help both the parties and definitely the crypto industry as a whole so for long term goals we have suggested a crypto regulators security so which means that a, a different like a different panel of uh, a different committee we can form to scrutinize everything and uh, to keep a check on everything related to crypto since it comes under the technology and also financial it's a mix of both so we can get people from both the sectors and have a good committee uh, formed who can keep a regular check and who can like keep updating the uh, policies and compliance part of the whole industry since it is an uh, on the rise and growing industries and there are many changes uh, overall going on so it would definitely be helpful if there is a separate committee for this uh, matter so i would suggest ki that everything related to this should be put under one uh, ministry or a, a, a policy maker who can regulate it and the last one i would suggest for long term uh, definitely there should be a regulatory sandbox for startups like innovators for crypto industries it is uh, like it is definitely the way forward through which we can help startups to go grow and not only provide them compliance but also help them uh, ensure the credibility they get and bo- definitely both these parts will help in uh, all the three like major factors which is the K- kyc compliance investor protection and preventing capital f- flight so let me just give you a brief about what is actually sandbox so it is like a testing environment for uh, to ensuring the regulatory compliance and security checks for any financial operations so the company would uh, like any startup or any like a uh, small company who wants to be part of the regulatory sandbox would be managed by and given a whole testing uh, ground for the financial or tech part by the committee or the like uh, in our case it's the RBI so which will not only help them provide like the finance they won't to have to face the uh, problems as in the real world but they can find all the loops and everything in the in the testing environment and can definitely work with the compliance or policy maker to he- fix those loopholes it not only helps it definitely helps in the cost reduction and also the credibility since the uh, startup or company is already been through the uh, sandbox part so they would always uh, already have a good compliance part and everything about will, would everything about them would be regulated so that would uh, definitely give them the credibility to go out in the real world and face uh, like get users through that so as i said the benefits of these sandbox is definitely the testing innovative innovative uh, proposition in the market so the the people can test easily things with real market and under a safe environment and they probably have to face less stringent rules since they are already working with the gov- uh, compliance part of the uh, industry and it's not only easy for the exchanges or the startups or it would be also helpful for the uh, regulators since they can easily check everything since they they would be working with them it definitely helps them bring out uh, bring down the cost barriers and uh, like innovations are usually take a all time high 
because of this and uh, definitely the transition from like the sandbox environment to the real world environment would be definitely smoother for the startups since they would have done already all the work and everything related to finding the loopholes and uh, transactions problems in the systems and then they can easily apply that model which has been tested uh, quite few times to the real world and this uh, definitely gives the users also a sense of credibility since the startup would had already worked uh, like the creators so that helps in providing security for users also to like how they forward with that so next uh, next we will uh, i will give you a brief about what is like the procedure for it so sandbox at the selection process it is divided into three parts the selection the preparation and the beyond the exit part so for selection i would say the regulators who are they have a few criterias like in india the rbi had a few criteria ai and fintech companies they didn't regulate uh, include the crypto industry for that but overall the fintech and the other uh, technical parties were invited to that so they had a few like uh, few channels for them to like uh, gain gain through that Uh, the next is the preparation and work, working in the sandbox so there is like pro- a proper plan for they can like in the in the working and sandbox they can provide the proper plan they can take all the the regulators can work with them and work on the customer protection measures they can also work on the risk management factor of the startups who are going into the fintech industry and also the resource and compliance part and for the last they can easily like work on the data privacy and confidentiality laws of all the aspects of the startup and definitely the licensing and general part of every uh, the startup and also it helps the startup to get uh, like promotions and free advertisement since it would be helpful for them to go beyond so i think everyone would be excited for now to like begin with the panel discussion so so samak shatul so let's begin with them everyone is waiting for us so for first question i would say let's go with atul atul uh, are you audible am i audible yes you are can you can you hear me yeah yeah so let's begin with you so i hope like everyone got a sense of what we were like getting into this and what we were like teach uh, trying to teach the people about uh, regulations in india so my first question would to you would be like the sh- sh- uh, like if the indian government decides to implement the ban where do you think the crypto market would go because of that see firstly uh, crypto is a global asset right i mean if you look at btc you look at any of the other cryptocurrencies you have to remember that these are global assets right yeah. if you look at the important jurisdictions across the world so that's japan uh, the eu australia singapore canada each one of these countries has actually legalized bitcoin at least they have not banned it yes if you look at jurisdictions like the us for example you've got uh, a lot of entities they are getting regulated now so the chances of banning cryptocurrency outright are totally gone and that's pretty much true of most of the jurisdictions in the world even pakistan the other day of course pakistan is a economic basket case so it actually makes sense for them to be in the uh, be be on the right side of cryptocurrency that is because that's the only way possibly for them to attract finance but i think you know the 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 risk of regulation has reduced substantially so for example i was just reading today that the us has about 60 million people who actually now have some form ownership of some form of cryptocurrency so basically i do not think banning uh, even in the indian context is going to work and in any case cryptocurrency or or blockchain requires only a smartphone and an internet connection right as simple as that yeah. of course there is this issue of of basically how do you do fiat on tramping right so so how do you use fiat currency which is inr or indian rupees in india to buy 
the currencies, but I think it will be always possible. You know, so really banning is not going to work. Uh, they should regulate. In fact, even as we speak, we've actually reached out to the Home Minister today. The meeting is actually happening today. On uh, so we've sent him a position paper to really, really, uh, basically say that let us regulate the industry. We have suggested the RBI and SEBI to be involved in the regulations. So we've looked to quite closely at what's uh, happened in the US and uh, Japan, especially because it's not not just the RBI, it's not just uh, SEBI, but probably other industry, uh, other sorry, other departments of the of the government need to be involved as well in regulating. But I think I think you know to cut to to sort of uh, get to the point. I do not think an outright ban in India would work. That would just sort of leave us out into the tech wilderness, and I don't think uh, I don't think India can afford to do that. If at all uh, the government does sort of come back saying there's going to be a ban, and I would be really really surprised if that happens, there will be some sort sort of a short term sentiment hit, right? But I really wouldn't wouldn't worry too much, you know. I mean, even if India sort of decides to stay out for a while, uh, which actually very few countries in the world have decided to do. There will be some sort of a short-term hit, possibly. I mean, if you're looking at price movement anyway, Bitcoin and most of the cryptocurrencies are volatile, right? It's not as if mm-hmm. India matters too much. I mean, how do we? How many? How many uh, people do we have buying Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in India? Maybe at best a crore, and that's that's also an overestimation. I think you know it's probably about uh, something like 50 lakhs or whatever. So basically, I'm saying that you know, uh, even if even if they ban cryptocurrencies or BTC in India, I don't think it's going to affect. The overall movement of crypto, especially Bitcoin, too much. Uh, and again, you know, to 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 really answer that question, I think uh, instead of a ban, regulation would work really well, and that's that's what will probably happen. Yeah, so that's pretty like good that that the uh, thing you said that it requires only an inter connect internet connection and a smartphone, and we are like pretty big users of in both the field in like. In the top ten all over the world in both the yeah, cases. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Samaksh, let me ask you. Like uh, Atul said, that a ban wouldn't work, and definitely we should go to the regulation. So, how should you uh, like? How should India begin to regulate cryptocurrency transactions? So we don't have to go to the all blanket ban altogether. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, thanks a lot for inviting me here, Samaksh. It's it's. Uh, Lovely to be here amongst various stakeholders and discussing this policy outset. Um, as rightly pointed out by you in your presentation, I think the first step to sort of delve into regulation is to identify a risk in the first place. In almost eight months uh, since the Supreme Court judgment, and we haven't seen any kind of regulatory clarity coming from the government. Rather, we've only seen a speculation of sorts that a, a cabinet note has been moved by the finance ministry to initiate. A crypto ban. Uh, now, in that background, in fact, the first draft legal definition of cryptocurrency in India also arises from the banning of cryptocurrency and regulation of official digital currency bill, which is like the first thing that we need to move ahead is need a regulatory clarity whether the said bill would be introduced in the parliament or not. Now, uh, coming to the classification of cryptocurrencies, uh, it's a very advanced payment market. So it's going to take a lot of discussion to, in fact, classify cryptocurrencies or crypto assets into various manners. As everyone here is aware, uh, crypto assets come in the form of stable coins, in the form of uh, security tokens or utility tokens. So what India needs is a globally accepted classification or a globally accepted definition that works best for its market. Now, in that, I'd just like to briefly delve into the two ways that uh, uh, India sort of can go ahead with it. Uh, before I do that, I just want to uh, say that it's been widely argued that uh, going ahead with cryptocurrency within the meaning of a currency as defined by the RBI, uh, a lot of people have argued that is not the best case because the payment system in India was never meant to be decent in nature. It works on the RBI as a sole regulator and hence the entire payment methodology in India is centralized in nature. So when you regard the uh, such a decentralized currency within the meaning of the uh, fiat terms, it, it it might cause a lot of hassle. Uh, coming to securities, I think uh, what India can do is amend the Securities Contract Regulation Act to sort of uh, bring the definition of digital assets within its meaning. Um, what's happening right now is that uh, security tokens themselves 
potentially can be seen to be banned under the banning of unreg- unregulated deposit schemes act and that is because uh, security tokens utility tokens or any investment contract having um, sort of crypto assets as their underlying value are not regulated in nature so that is uh, what's needed as uh, by the sebi right now um, the us in this regard is correctly pointed out by mr atul also has taken a very innovative approach uh, they recently released the securities clarity act what the securities clarity act basically states is that any digital uh, uh, asset that has been introduced by someone would not automatically classified as a security by the nature that their underlying value in itself is a digital asset now that helps a lot when investors are sort of using digital assets security tokens or other kind of token for fund raising projects that's because then you don't come within the per- sec and you don't have to create a regulatory hassle in the first place so that is one of the ways that uh, so can go ahead with it just taking one minute more on that uh, very recently in fact a few days back uh, i came up with a self regulatory organization for the payments ecosystem in india um i believe a, uh, something similar can happen with the crypto assets uh, ecosystem wherein there is a self regulatory authority or a that is happening however that shouldn't be the basis of regulation or the of the framework there should be a robust uh, more than adequate framework that we see by the government but definitely a self regulatory organization of crypto assets with help or uh, take forward uh, our ecosystem's case yeah rightly said like uh, it would it can be like self regulation can't be the like the f- for future but we can start with it and yeah. definitely build on that and build as you said robust policies for like the future see i just have i just have one input there yeah yeah i actually think that if the industry uh, goes the self regulation way at least till till various people in the government and india is india is a poor pretty pretty poor government and regulatory structure at that right i mean it's hard one within the government who really understands technology cryptocurrency so so i myself am pretty pretty well politically connected and frankly i have approached as i said you know we we are discussing very with the home minister and frankly there's very very few people within the industry or sorry within the government or or even within the regulator and i'm not saying the regulator is backward or anything like that but i'm basically saying it's very difficult for them to understand what's really going on in this space also because the space is evolving really fast you know so you actually might see a uh, self regulation going forward i i wouldn't want to discount that you know i would actually say why not right i mean if if the likes of binance and kucoin and a lot of these exchanges are somewhat lightly lightly regulated and in fact the ones that are lightly regulated are actually probably working the best the us has got fairly robust sort of uh, mechanisms etc so they are they are okay right i mean they've got a lot of uh, innovation technology they've got stanford bay area blah 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 etc they can sort of fall back on that uh, on, on on that sort of up infrastructure if you may for india to do that that's going to be very very difficult so uh, so so the point i'm trying to make is that in fact you know even self regulation till uh, what to regulate how to regulate is really worked out may not be a bad idea at all yeah yeah like i also agree like the, in the government people like uh, a lot for a lot of them like uh, the cryptocurrencies are a whole another industry which they can't figure out figure out anything about it so they are not able to like take a decision how to move forward with it so for starters i would definitely say like a self regulation can also be a pretty good idea to at least like to uh, start with it start the whole industry on the run so let me just ask you atul uh, so as you know like there is a certain spike in public sentiment towards the last six, six months uh, in the crypto for the crypto currency industry so yeah. what do you think the lockdown and the whole covid pandemic has played the the role it has played in this right see see it's as simple as this right i mean uh, uh, the world sort of moved away from the gold pack in 1973 so that was the bretton wood system right from 1973 till 2008 when the first financial crisis hit the lehman crisis uh, the us balance sheet size was about 800 billion dollars uh in the approximately uh, i would say two years so from 2008 to about 2020 the us balance sheet increased to about 4 trillion so they printed approximately four times the money that they had printed in the first 35 years 
uh, in the next four, uh, in the next approximately 12 years. So they've been basically printing money like crazy. And it's not just the US, it's the uh, Euro region. So the ECB has done it. Uh, the UK the other day announced a 750 billion pound package. Uh, Japan has been doing it. God knows for what, right? I mean, if you actually look at the numbers, the numbers are ridiculous from a COVID perspective. But they've been printing left, right and center as well. Australia started doing it. So basically, it's, 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 it's paper money at the end of the day, right? Even if it's yeah. digital, it's still paper money. So I would say uh, that the biggest sort of uh, driver here is all the unlimited money printing that's happening in the world. COVID has just uh, sort of accelerated that process. A lot of governments are going to print like crazy and it's not just because of COVID, you know, so, so for example, Biden wants this new green deal to happen and he's willing to sort of throw two trillion dollars at it. So people are just going to think, you know, money is for free. Let's print it right at the end of the day, it's paper money, you know, who cares? Right? I mean, and the US is actually you are you are seeing signs of that. It's not the it's not just the US. You know, I mean, most developed and Western economies across the world have, have got this thing called modern monetary theory. So it's called MMT or QE, if you may, you know, so unlimited quantitative easing. And that is the biggest driver that I see. Uh, COVID has, of course, accelerated that entire process. I actually don't think COVID is going to go away for at least the next couple of years, vaccine or not. It's very, very difficult to control this kind of a global pandemic. Doesn't matter who invents what kind of vaccine, the rolling it out, uh, uh, distributing it, uh, etc. is going to take at least two years, if not more. And in those two years, you are going to see money printing like crazy, right? I mean, everyone's going to just keep on printing huge amounts of money. And that money has to flow somewhere, right? So why, uh, Bitcoin is obviously one of the alternate assets, I would say, you know, so gold is another, but clearly it's going to benefit from that. So that's, that's really my view, you know, COVID has accelerated something that was already happening from that 2008 to about 2020 era. And now every from, one from Trump, Biden to, I don't know what, you know, Abe, of course, Abe is, Abe is gone now because he's sick, but, but there's like plenty of other leaders who have who've sort of realized that, hang on, at the end of the day, this is paper money, right? I mean, you can print as much of it as you want. And that's the biggest driver for crypto or Bitcoin in my, uh, in my view. Yeah, rightly said, like the whole situation has, uh, like, uh, it has a domino effect and everything is like going crazy for this, because of this. So let me just give a, uh, ask you some of like a little regularity clarity on how like the cryptocurrency businesses should go about on implementing the like the compliance solutions or or even creating a like a whole framework for India to like regulate the industry. Yeah, well, um, you know, when, when it comes to compliance, uh, I believe there's always this ambiguity and a conflict that arises. I like to give one example on that and quite funny uh, in that too. Very recently in September 2020, the Office of uh, Control of Currency in the United States issued an interpretive letter on the regulation of stable coins. They basically state that uh, banks would now be allowed to hold uh, stable coins and offer services around stable coins. Uh, just a few hours of that uh, issuance of that letter, so, uh, the Securities Exchange Commission uh, came out with their own statement stating that we do not agree with the OCC's interpretation of uh, stable coins. You know, they've sort of put it in a very restrictive sense. And uh, if you want to create any compliance requirement for the same, or if you want to structure a sale of stable coins, you then have to come to us for clarity. So, you know, there's always this conflict between regulators, especially in uh, widely divided uh, regulations such as the, the U.S., so uh, in that regard, India has lagged behind a lot because they haven't tweaked their existing regulations to be in line with technology specific elements. Um, the latest, uh, uh, I think the November 2020 RBI FinTech report states that there are almost 342 cryptocurrency firms functioning in India right now. Most of them have in fact implemented some kind of a KYC or an AML compliance requirement. But uh, in the absence of any proper definition in the uh, uh, Prevention of Money Laundering Act, I believe uh, one could go on to look into the uh, Financial Action Task Force reports that have been released, uh, specifically the Global Standards for Crypto Assets report, which go on to specifics to provide guidelines on how digital assets exchanges would also work. Uh, another interesting thing that I uh, sort of find when it comes to compliance is uh, would a wallet service provider uh, be required to fall into the, into the comprehensive application of KYC and CFT regulations? Now, the FATF goes on to say that they would. 
and uh, that is something that india should also uh, look into uh, because currently uh, the idea is to regulate the bigger cryptocurrency exchanges and uh, uh, i believe not a lot of uh, wallet holders or even self hosted wallets uh, for that matter are, should also be brought within the kyc procedures as asserted by rpi and the it act and other intermediary guidelines so that is something that we should look into yeah definitely so uh, let me now go to atul so atul like the cryptocurrency is in uh, like how do you see cryptocurrency evolving other than for like only the purpose of trade and investment so what do you think the other possible ways where we can like put cryptocurrencies into use right so see uh, Maybe, so, so cryptocurrencies firstly are of different kind, right? I mean, you've got BTC, which is probably yeah. a store of value. You've got Ethereum, which is a smart contract platform. You've got storage tokens now. You've got DeFi and uh, decentralized finance tokens now. You've got uh, the private VPN guys. You've got something like Helium, which is more of a sort of a low cost. Uh, uh, cost wireless network which has got a got a bigger range so if you if, if you know obviously if any any one of you is seriously interested you guys should just take a look at the top 200 cryptocurrencies by ranking you know i mean just go to coin market cap go to i guess coin gecko sort of look up the cryptocurrencies and their business models it's it's fairly uh, easy to find out what these cryptocurrencies are about what they are doing and there are like various various uh, sort of business models various uh, obviously digital tokens security tokens utility tokens uh, and and all of that in fact ftx the other day include uh, actually introduced tokenized stocks as well so for example someone sitting in india cannot get access to let's say an apple or a google or a tesla of course uh, the likes of hdfc securities icici etc do do actually let you buy some of these foreign stocks but if you actually wanted to buy other smaller stocks etc that is that is likely to be very much possible not too far in the future because most of these crypto exchanges will list tokenized stocks as well and in fact even actually tokenize anything in the world right so so to that extent i would say um, there are just plenty of or, or different business models out there the digital tokens associated so cryptocurrencies associated with these business models are different Uh, so as i said btc store of value ethereum smart contract platform helium low low range wide area network you've got orchard which is a you know virtual private vpn and there's like just just so many of these ideas that are sort of cropping up right now now is uh, are all of these ideas likely to succeed mostly not right i mean i, I would say 10 to 20% will succeed the remainder 80 to 90% will fail Yeah. Uh, better better cryptocurrencies and models will probably evolve so you might have you know a different tokens as things come along or or as or as the market evolves but i would just say you know there are so many different kind of cryptocurrencies out there that you really need to go into detail as to what each one of them is and what their purpose is as well because there's obviously a lot of these pump down john mcafee kind of uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, schemes out there as well Uh, so just to answer your question i guess some actually you know, there's like so many different use cases for cryptocurrency that i can think of and that you guys can see in the top sort of 200 you know i mean if you want to go beyond 200 there's like 7000 cryptocurrencies out there but i would say the top 200 is pretty much uh, indicative of the different business models of the different uh, uh, different types of cryptocurrencies and their applications but it's best to best for each one of you to actually go into detail Of of each one of them to really find out what's happening out there, you know. Otherwise, otherwise you'll just get sucked into a, a pump and dump scheme if you're just looking at the price movement and trying to invest on the basis of that. Yeah, the rightly said. Like we have to investigate. If like if a person wants to know more about, they can definitely check it out on the Coin Market Cap. And also, uh, in the last like I would say four months, the, the there is like a whole uh, like change. the coin market cap list since the defi tokens have come up at a rapid speed so there is a whole lot of disturbance going on in there and a lot of defi coins have uh, come into the 1 to 200 sec- uh, sections of the yeah like, i would say i would say over the next one year or so btc is probably your best bet i mean if someone's a passive yeah. investor someone just looking at taking exposure just buy btc and ethereum 
uh, you know, uh, maybe I have at least 80% of your of your portfolio in these two coins, and then the remainder 20% you can experiment, right? The remainder altcoins are always going to be very volatile. Yeah. Uh, you've got the two main use cases covered through Bitcoin and Ethereum, and if you want to be very very aggressive, ambitious, whatever, right? I mean, if you want to take a risk, you better do your own sort of analysis to really figure out what the um, various cryptocurrencies are. Yeah, most definitely. Like for investment, people should definitely like before investing. If they uh, do their analysis, it would be a better uh, bet for them to invest. So, uh, Samakshas, I know like you educate a lot of people in policies and regulatory frameworks through your website, uh, which is blog suit. So, like, are there any common like misconceptions you have seen in the crypto industries or like? any misunderstandings you want to dispel for the uh, for the viewers yeah uh, definitely uh, you know when you whenever you speaking to a lot of people uh, especially people who don't understand uh, or like are not very well versed with the technology behind uh, cryptocurrencies i think one of the most common misconception that comes to mind is that people are trying to assert uh, cryptocurrencies substitution of fiat or traditional currencies you know um, in my opinion that is not uh, the case uh, the truth is that just because the technology has a value added or a value transfer role asserted to it, it does not necessarily mean that you have to make it into a legal tender in the first place. Um, a lot of companies, a lot of leading companies have taken uh, crypto assets to be purely contractual in nature. Very recently, JP Morgan has released their uh, tokenized assets. And uh, it is in fact this alternative finance approach that we need to model into the Indian markets and substantiate through it. Uh, the second the thing that I find around uh, crypto assets and also pointed out by Mr. Atul is the volatility of it. You know, people think that bitcoins or other crypto assets are naturally susceptible to price manipulation. However, that is not always so. And I like to give an example uh, to substantiate my point here. Uh, just about around March 27, the annualized volatility trading rate of Bitcoin was about 166%. Uh, compared to on March 28, 2020, the annualized volatility trading rate for Yes Bank was 428.5%. So, you know, taking that consideration, uh, if the inter-ministerial committee is going on to say that we're going to ban it just based on volatility, then they should put restrictions or something on those sense too. So that perception, I think, of price manipulation needs to be eliminated altogether. So that is uh, something. Yeah, that is the major issue a lot of uh, regulators and also users have uh, in the like the whole volatility of the cryptocurrency sector so uh, Atul, as you already said like there is a need of uh, need of our like the crypto uh, the regula regulations so what advice uh, would you like give to the existing market participant and also the new entrants in the crypto industry about the regulations see yeah, i would frankly say uh... If you actually look at the genesis, the origins of uh, Bitcoin, right? And if you go back to that uh, paper, white paper that uh, Satoshi Nagamoto put together in that 2008 time frame, it's basically an anti-establishment drive, right? I mean, it basically goes against, uh, I would say, this overall sort of thought, firstly, of centralization, centralization of money, that is. And secondly, the fact that money can actually be managed properly by the government or politicians. Now, that's just a whole load of crap that we've been raised on for a number of years, right? For some reason, we actually think that if you look at how government was formed, government was actually never formed to manage money, you know? So so let's let's really get that clear. You know, it's something that we've, we've been brought up with, that there's something that we've lived with, something that we've actually come to believe. Uh, is 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 the gospel truth? It's actually not right, and and it's not just that. If if monetary discipline is followed properly, it was still okay, right? I mean, but if you actually look at this recent trend, which I just explained, last ten or twelve years where they've been printing money like crazy, I would say I would say uh, that's just not done, right? I mean, what it basically means that let's say you and me have slogged our entire lives to let us say put away you know ten crores into the bank account. Someone who's in the government can just print 100 crores and they are, and, and that's it, right? They are richer than you, right? So I would say that the, point, the reason I'm making this point is that uh, uh, governments, uh, most of, of them will try and 
firstly ban or try and regulate this space for sure i wouldn't worry too much about the regulations as long as you are not on the wrong side of the law completely right so if you're using this for money laundering obviously it's wrong right but there are so many genuine use case of cryptocurrency cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology which are just unbelievable right i mean there are models in there which is why i said just look at the top 200 cryptocurrencies and look at the genuine business models they are they are just unbelievable right and don't don't necessarily focus on on the uh, i would say on 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 things like you know money laundering and stuff like that because if you go there it's obviously on the wrong side of the law completely right so i would say regulations will come and go uh, the government has tried to regulate absolutely everything right down to even law jihad now so so i would say you know all these things will keep on happening don't be on the wrong side of the law regulations will come and go for sure this is a space where the most important thing for the government which is money is being affected for sure so they will try and regulate uh, the, the the space but i think i think that's okay you know i would worry too much about it i'll probably go along and see what uh, they they tend to do so I seen actually most of the western economies have been very very accommodative and samaksha was actually talking about the occ you know the the, the office of the uh, the comptroller currency and in fact in fact uh, even as we speak today morning they put out uh, something which is which is very very conducive to cryptocurrencies you should actually read up on it as well but largely i have seen a lot of governments which india tends to follow right so we don't we don't follow china right in in terms of our model in terms of the, the the political or the geopolitical uh, developments as well we follow the us we tend to follow the european union in terms of political ideology i am saying right and, and hence our regulations will probably be at some point in time more or less a copycat i wouldn't say a cut paste but more or less a copycat because we don't have our own original brains right i mean we are just going to go and see what the us did what japan did what the eu did and i would say uh, with with maybe a one to one a couple of years of sort of a bit of uh, going here and there sort of thing on the regulations front will probably end up copying the the western nations on this so i wouldn't worry too much about the regulations uh, i as i said you know, i don't think an outright ban is going to happen in india and and if they have to regulate light or self regulation is what i would really like you know i don't want some some idiots to basically come in and do hard regulation because unless they really know what they are talking about hard regulation especially in a space which is evolving so fast from a technology perspective it's going to be very very difficult for anyone within the government or our regulators which is mostly rbi sebi etc mm-hmm. to really do any meaningful sort of regulation around this you know so uh, yeah so that's that's my view on regulations yeah so yeah yeah definitely if the if the government uh, like chooses to see the like the terrorism and financing of those illicit activities but so they'll like definitely that that would be there and that would probably be the regulations also so right, see see samaksh samaksh uh, sorry to interrupt but you have to realize and everyone's got to realize here that even cash gold yeah. regular money is used for all these activities right i mean it's not as if before crypto came in that none of this existed right so dawood was still around everyone still around and everyone was around even when cash was there gold was there uh, your regular money was there so that's why malle and modi nirav modi right actually ran away they ran away with proper money right it's not as if they used crypto to to run away or anything like that so i do understand that crypto does does sort of introduce a new element here which makes it somewhat easier for someone to do these activities but hang on that's that's the world right i mean if 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 you actually make your economy attractive to investors to people people to run away you know and if someone does i'm sure global regulation will catch i mean there's interpol right i mean tomorrow if you've got someone who's really on the wrong side of the law let the interpol take care of it right why why do you want to stop genuine innovation uh, from happening uh, and and i actually see blockchain and cryptocurrencies having that potential and i think the world is largely and mostly realizing it as i said you know india will fall in line at some point in time it may not happen immediately but i would say a year two three years out they will probably follow mostly the japanese the, uh, the japanese the the us the european sort of models rather than sort of go down the china route here. so so, so cbdc is obviously central bank digital currencies are a bit of a threat but they are they are not not that that uh, major either you know so cbdc's do have a sort of a use case that competes with stable coins 
but but anyways you know so i'm, I'm probably uh, speaking out of turn here but i would say you know as i said you know so crypto being used for any of the terrorist and money laundering activities so cash and gold and all all the other stuff has yeah. been used in the past as well yeah definitely like i was about to say that only like cash and gold has been always used so it's like the same thing only like you can't you have to regulate it you just can't see that side of the picture so as you said about this like the central bank and digital currency uh, i would like to go to samaksh and ask like what are your thoughts about the recent developments in the central bank uh, digital currency and what can actually indian regulator take from its growth or its uh, working model yeah so definitely as mr Adi pointed out there appears to be this uh, race amongst nations to sort of uh, catch up to uh, sort of adopting a digital currency model uh, when it it comes to india i think the case for cbdc can almost directly be made out from the banning bill that has been introduced under part 3 of which they say that you know they're looking to uh, sort of introduce a digital currency as a legal tender and uh, any other further digital currency would then be classified as a foreign currency within the meaning of foreign exchange and management act however i believe we are a bit far from there given the fact that india has not introduced a policy paper or even a white paper of sorts to sort of implement uh, a cbdc model whether it be a retail model or whether it be a uh, sort of a wholesale model uh, very recently uh, the european uh, commission had also uh, sort of uh, provided how they going to go about the cbdc model china has uh, advanced aggressively in that area um somewhere around october i believe uh, china incorporated the definition of a digital yuan within their banking law so that is something that's happening uh, globally with china almost winning the race that we are in currently um coming back to the reserve bank of india uh, in the recent report uh, where they set out the uh, sort of the technical payments vision for 2021 rbi focuses substantially on the digital payments aspect and they say that you know maybe creating a digital currency is one way to go about it however to in order to do that i believe rbi would first have to remodel their entire financial intermediation system given the fact that our payments economy is at a very advanced stage when compared to other nations currently um there are a lot of cyber security concerns that have also been uh, sort of established in other nations um the working group in australia also uh, was sort of uh, working around how to uh, supplant uh, the cyber security reasons and given the fact that india does not currently have a personal data protection bill in place these privacy issues will not be able to develop uh, these privacy issues will not be able to have a grievance mechanism in place and that's what really required from a data protection perspective so to just so just to sum up i believe uh, for in order for a cbdc case to be made out what india first needs to do is identify what kind of financial intermediation would they really be requiring whether it's going to be a retail model that they scope into or whether a wholesale model that they scope into yeah so like as you said like uh, india is move the rbi wants to, india to move like towards digitization and a cashless economy so my question to like both of you first like i would like to know atul side so the india government has started to move towards like digitization and uh, cashless economy so how may that be helpful for like the crypto business in india or like the whole industry in india for the crypto currency right. so the see so with see i mean it's not uh, digitization uh, with with your traditional fiat currency right so with the indian rupee yeah and uh, i see crypto of course it's that's digital as well but there's a huge difference there right i mean the simple dif- uh, there's a couple of differences one is Uh, our sort of digitization drive is all centralized, right? I mean, it's not on the blockchain. It's it's basically whatever Modi and 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 the the, the PMO decides. That's the that's the digitization strategy. The, the the best thing that I see about that is basically for the digitization drive to succeed in India, you need to have the smartphone as well as as well as uh, the internet, right? I mean, without that, you cannot digitize. And those are the very components that. actually uh, drive crypto as well i mean in the sense that as long as you've got a smartphone and an internet connection you should be able to get your hands on on crypto uh, uh, in in some form or shape in some way or the other and as i said if crypto is a global phenomenon and india is hardly 1% or lesser actually much lesser if you really ask me i would say crypto is going to in that sense globally right i mean it's not just about india 
since digitization actually means that the government in india cannot do away uh, with it as well as with the smartphone especially with and partnering with google low cost really low cost smartphones out there in the market i think uh, india and digitization is here to stay right i mean it's not going away whether it's whether it's or whether it's anyone else so that's like a, a a change that 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 just cannot be reversed at least uh, not in the near future right i mean it's going to take a lot of time if at all someone decides to do it you know? and which is why i said that is one of the biggest drivers for crypto uh, to to really succeed and be around and hence i think the government cannot ban it it will try and regulate it for sure i don't know what sort of regulation you know whether it's light regulation whether it's hard regulation whether there's rbi sebi or whoever they will probably go down that route but but to 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 really you know answer that question digitization and crypto go hand in hand while they are separate the drivers for digitization are the same as for crypto so they should coexist in in some form or the other you know so the government can can as i said you know i don't know whether uh, modi one fine day or amit shah sort of decide so oh, we don't like crypto and we want to ban it because we are just going to look on the at the bad side of things right we're going to look at money laundering and terrorist activities etc but i think i think that would be really sad if that happens and yet it will not stop the crypto movement whether in india or globally you know globally of course it cannot stop but i think india will just sort of come back after some time when the government realizes that this thing just cannot be banned out right yeah so some of uh, you have views on that the whole indian government and moving towards the digitization and cashless economy so um i think what's also required additionally to crypto assets or cryptocurrencies is sort of a regulatory model around blockchain uh we haven't seen a lot of advancement in that area from the central government while recently the telangana state government and the tamil nadu state government came up with their own blockchain policy what we really need is a digitized inclusion based mechanism for de- a decentralized ledger technology as well <coughs> um just to pick up from mr atul uh, point stating that cryptocurrency and the technology sort of goes hand in hand in my opinion that is yet so uh, the supreme court in the imai judgment very exclusively stated that the technology behind crypto and crypto themselves can be severed in nature and recently uh, the government in fact was arguing that you know even if they come up with a cbdc model it's not necessarily so that they use blockchain behind it so that is something that we uh, need to look into uh, just coming back to my point now uh, regulation around uh, crypto uh, in order to sort of uh, uh, go with the hand in hand of digital india should be adapted to protect consumers um similar initiatives have been taken in the cashless area also where rbi proposed sort of um, a redressal mechanism um, an argument here uh, and i think one of the very uh, vastly approached argument that uh, the inter ministerial committee made when it came to financial inclusion about crypto was the fact that uh, crypto assets being global in nature may not completely adhere to the data localization norms provided by the personal data protection bill however very recently whatsapp was given the green light to function in india even though previously they were not adhering to data localization now bringing that example in the crypto landscape i believe in order to for the ecosystem to advance a very similar engagement of stakeholder consultation should happen as it's happening with the personal data protection bill and that is how we'll uh, sort of be in line with the digital ecosystem and the atmanirbhar bharat project that uh, our government is trying to take forward yeah definitely so like for the last question i uh, wanted to atul to join in like can you tell us about like what you guys are working at on entails blockchain and cryptocurrency ecosystem like you already told there in talks with the um, uh, the MOH Ministry of Home Affairs with Amit Shah. So, can you like a little bit elaborate on that? What you guys are doing and everything about it? Sure. So, uh, so my view of crypto clearly has been that till uh, recently, uh, the entire space has been retail driven, right? I mean, it's it's uh, the fact that uh, that if you look at that 2008 to about 2017 sort of time frame. 
uh, it has it has basically been a retail driven phenomenon so we are actually focusing on the institutions the high net worth individuals to really really develop business on that side you know because while the retail side is interesting it's pretty competitive so you've got you know buyu coin coin dcx uh, wazirx you know coin zepe etc etc right and there's clearly a lot of lot of other services that can be afforded uh, that 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 can be uh, that can be provided to institutions and uhni clients that is really the area we are focusing on so it's more of a more of a, a customized personalized service if you may we are still fleshing out the details as to how we want to do it is it a broker model is it is it in partnership with one of the large global biggies like a coinbase or a bitgo so we still 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 really trying to sort through that that is one and second is as i said you know while we would ideally want to be regulated and while i don't like regulations frankly i would still be obviously want to be on the right side of the law so so that regulation is welcome but i hope it's light regulation because as i said you know simply because i believe that the regulators are not equipped enough at this point in time to really have any hard regulations in place and even if they do that they would have actually end up constraining or restraining the industry which is just not necessary at this point in time now, as long as you've got the main points covered around the kyc and the ml uh, you're fine right i mean how does it matter if i Uh, as long as i know my customer on who he is and what the source of the money is what what the money buys right at the end of the day so so i would say um, those are the two real areas we are focusing on one is institutional business institutional advice and not just on cryptocurrencies but on the blockchain side as well there's a lot of uh, uh, so we, for example we are working on an idea around asset securitization how can we sort of uh, meet the trillion dollar funding gap as well so asset securitization is separate financial inclusion which is sort of funding the small shopkeeper let us say in a satara or a small town in kerala etc putting that information on the blockchain working with existing nbfc players to get that information put it on the blockchain get it get it financed by by uh, by cryptocurrency Uh, and second is obviously as i said you know it's more on the regulatory side in terms of working with the regulators to ensure that we are on the right side of the law which is why i said as uh, uh, in terms of the regulation i hope it's light or or at least not too hard regulation because otherwise it's just going to end up constraining the industry uh, per se yeah definitely like if the uh, regulations are more hard then it probably would affect the industry more than it would help them so that would cause more a lot of problem for the whole industry maintaining those like uh, regulations and going past through them so uh, let me now come to samox so samox as you guys are working on in book blocks so like what are the policy development undertaken by block suits and like or the upcoming projects any if there are to which we like help resolve gaps in india's fintech or crypto asset ecosystem yeah definitely so uh, at blocksuits we are sort of uh, uh, looking to engage with the fintech law ecosystem in india at large not just uh, uh, specify ourselves with the uh, um blockchain and cryptocurrency in that we do a lot of reg- uh, we do a lot of policy proposals to government when it comes to digital assets uh, very recently we had sent a policy to the government of malaysia on how to regulate uh, sort of uh, digital wallets and that was positively perceived by them uh coming back to our crypto work uh, we've published a lot of research on how cryptocurrencies crypto assets stable coins cbdcs can be prospectively regulated in india and how are they be uh, how are they being do, uh, done so in other jurisdictions as well a uh, very specific project that we're looking to undertake uh, uh, in the future is an official is a campaign for an official digital rupee wherein our first step is going to be publishing a report in uh, creating a model for a digital currency in india and sort of see how that goes forward uh, we're also going to engage with a lot of stakeholders not only in india but abroad when it comes to our digital currency project and i hope for such discussions even more to happen when uh, that occurs yeah so thank you so much for like answering the questions for like getting uh, people a lot of idea about how cryptocurrency and digital asset regulations in india and what's the status of everything around it so uh, if like we have a lot of questions from our viewers also so if you guys are like comfortable we can like go through few of them okay yeah, so of course 
yeah so so uh, let me ask you any just jump in any of you any one of you feel like i actually see a comment here from from shreya mishra i don't know if you want me to address that or yeah yeah, yeah. go ahead no issue yeah it's, i think i think there's someone called shreya mishra who's an associate with shardul mangal das the law firm and uh, i think uh, he does not agree with my comment where any government is dependent on foreign institutions for policing when the victim is their citizen this is against the basic concept of sovereignty needless to say it's against the indian constitution so i'm just reading out what he's put out there yeah. i'm sure sure all of you can read it as well so basically my point there was pretty simple right uh, so there are good and bad uses of cryptocurrency uh, as there are good and bad uses of cash gold and any any other sort of legal tender out there right so what i am basically saying is that if you try to police the good uses of cryptocurrency uh, just because you think it can be used for bad purposes i think it just stifles innovation uh, and i can i can actually lay out at least five genuine use cases for cryptocurrency which are which are which are something that the indian citizen must have access to you know i believe very strongly in that I actually worked in the US uh, I'm I'm pretty closely associated so I've got a company which has got a presence in the bay area as well I've been involved with technology for a long time and when I made that comment with respect to interpol all I was saying is if anyone uses cryptocurrency for its bad or um, uses on the wrong side of the law uh, get I mean I mean it's not just the interpol right I'm sure you've got the indian whatever cbi etc get them involved as well and catch those people but don't just put restrictions on on the entire uh, innovation potential of cryptocurrencies as well as the underlying blockchain technology and a lot of people actually think that blockchain and cryptocurrencies are separate uh, while they fundamentally are in the sense that uh, uh, cryptocurrencies actually build on blockchain technology cryptocurrencies are actually the the sort of life and blood of of the blockchain technology as well right otherwise a lot of it is just meaningless you know i mean you can you can you have competing technologies if you are a technology guy you can actually you would know that whatever you could put on yeah. the blockchain you can put in a database as well right frankly yeah. but the incentive mechanism the game theory aspects that satoshi nagamoto put in place were essentially to that extent anti government anti sovereignty as well so to that extent you know I, i don't have any excuses there i'm basically saying uh, i'm i'm not against the indian constitution or anything like that clearly but all i am saying is that you know a lot of the cryptocurrency movement has happened because the government has mishandled money and that is something that it's not just me saying that right i mean that's it's 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 basically the reason that the entire crypto movement has happened and while i totally obviously disagree with with any bad uses of cryptocurrency i'm just saying you know there's a reason that this movement came around and hence to some extent it will be anti establishment it will be to some extent anti government government will try to regulate it right i am not the government obviously it doesn't matter what i say modi and shah etc will try and regulate and so will trump and biden etc as well right but all i was saying is just let 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 the interpol or whoever right i mean even if it's the cbi etc handle those aspects do not just stifle cryptocurrency because you think it has got bad uses my simple answer to that is that you know so does cash so does gold why haven't you stopped that you know so so as simple as that so so we have a, a question from shivangi so she wanted to know like uh, can accepting stable coins be the first step to introduce cryptocurrency in india so what do you guys think yeah so uh, i think i take that um while stable coin is a very uh, innovative method of uh, sort of regulating crypto assets uh, the point of the matter is that the definition of cryptocurrency in the banning bill is so wide that it would almost necessarily include all kind of forums around crypto assets and stable coins would be one of them uh, we have seen a lot of regulatory gap when it comes to libra as well you know they had introduced that 2019 paper and then they reintroduced that 2020 paper and now it's going to be 2021 and we still don't know what's happening around libra so while stable coin essentially works on uh, the underlying principle of having a fiat currency to it and it's perceived as a less volatile value uh, when it comes to indian government i am not quite sure if uh, they would be perceiving stable coins exclusively from other crypto assets i believe when it comes to banning if they do ban they would also ban stable coins so uh, yeah 
Yeah, so I guess I guess I I think I understood the question differently, and I'm not sure. But if someone's wanting to take an exposure to the crypto space, there's there's a use case for stable coins out there. So as an Indian citizen, you couldn't buy the US dollar today, right? So let's say you've got a crore of rupees, you think ten lakh rupees worth of uh, USD, uh, USD, right? US dollars is what you want to buy. You cannot buy it, right? As simple as that. But you can actually buy USDT. You can buy USD coin. You can buy two USD. A lot of these are supposed to be pegged. In fact, they are pegged against the US dollars, and there is supposed to be collateral, which basically means if you buy one USDT, USD tether, there's supposed to be a US dollar sitting in the bank somewhere in the US or or, or wherever. So, so yes, you can actually take exposure to cryptocurrencies that way. These cryptocurrencies give you a return or a yield or an interest as well, similar to a savings bank account. So, I'm sure you would have heard of apps like Celsius. There's so there's. Uh, Crypto.com, each one of which will give you about a 10% sort of a return uh, just yeah, by holding it in that wallet, right? So if you want to do that, yeah, but you, I mean, all you do is you, yeah, you for for sure you do get exposure to the US dollar or even to the GBP, uh, the British pound, the Canadian dollar, whatever, right? And these do yield you a certain return, etc. But but as I said, you know, these are these are mostly issued by centralized agencies. These are not decentralized cryptocurrencies. So if you want to take an exposure to the US dollar, it's all right. You could do that. It, it will provide you an interest or return as well. It all depends on what your investment objective is, right? And if you want to be safe, yeah, stable coins are a good bet. They are supposed to be uh, to be to be backed by collateral as well. Bitcoin is not backed by anything. Uh, stable coins are, or at least they are supposed to be. So you could take an exposure that way. They would, they, as I said, you know, they do yield, do give you a yield or an interest. So yeah, that's that's one use case. And if you want to get no no more details, I guess you could ping me offline. But yeah, that's that's one definite use case as well. Yeah. So I'll be just like uh, there are a lot of questions. So I'll be just taking the last one since we are running out of time. So uh, we have a question from just wait a second. From San K, so so they are asking like how are cryptocurrency taxed and there are few exchanges that are charging GST. So will there be additional taxation on it under the other incomes? So so the San K wanted to know like how are cryptocurrency taxed? So in yes, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, so very briefly, actually, I think uh, currently there is no innovative or there is no um, extensive uh, taxation regime to India right now. Most of the cryptocurrency exchanges are taxing on the basis of them being intermediaries in nature, and in order to bring uh, sort of taxation of cri- uh, cryptocurrency, when the CGST Act again uh, coming back to one of my first points, we'll have to classify cryptocurrencies. You know. We need to ascertain whether they're commodities, they're transferable value assets, whether they are ascertain as securities or derivatives, whether they are ascertain as a prepaid instrument in nature. There are a lot of case laws where, uh, you know, uh, like Indian Supreme Court have taken technology transfers of software transfers to be taxed within the meaning of CSG, CSGT, uh, sorry, uh, the GST. So uh, we sort of consider um, uh, cryptocurrencies to be software in nature within the meaning of FEMA. Then there's going to be a different mechanism of taxation. So there's no clear answer to it yet, but I hope it comes soon. Yeah, I agree that that view as well. You know, so I think uh, pretty much there's no clear taxation policy as of now. Apart from obviously, if you buy Bitcoin with INR, let's say for ten thousand dollars, you sell it for twenty thousand, you made made a gain of ten thousand dollars. I'm guessing that that's going to be taxed now. I don't know what sort of uh, is it capital gains tax, is it income tax? I, I I really have no idea. Right? Is it business income, etc. So I think the taxation policy is still not clear. You know, that's that's the short answer. Okay, so so let, so if you guys are comfortable, let's just take another last one. Okay. So so, uh, so like we have a question from. So we have another question from San K. So they want to ask, you know, like, how is the world moving towards adapting crypto for transaction? Like, instead of using actual currency like rupees or dollars, how can like we transact on a daily basis through crypto? 
So, so much you want to go first, or uh, no? Um, I, I think I just like to add like a very brief point to that, and Atul, or maybe you can take on after that. Uh, very recently, PayPal has also incorporated cryptocurrency transactions within the medium. So, I think definitely there's a substantial value. uh especially in the european countries when it uh, comes to sort of overweighing on cryptocurrency transactions just like to give you the germany model that's going on right now there's a bit of controversy there why that's happened is because germany sort of introduced their own electronic securities law now what this electronic securities law basically states is that um what, there there are going to be two types of securities one that is transacted over a crypt, over cryptographically uh, let's say on a blockchain and one that's transacted uh, just in the manner of a normal digital transaction or a digital representation that you have maybe on your mobile phone so given that i think they're not uh, looking to further upon their cryptocurrency regime right now but other than that uh, especially in the european markets they've released the uh, uh, regulation of market in crypto assets very recently in september which is one of the most comprehensive regulations in the world right now around cryptocurrency so definitely a lot of countries such as sweden also they are taking up uh, cryptocurrency transactions more openly right now yeah so i guess i guess uh, you know if you look at transactions right i mean when you say transactions i'm guessing that you want to use cryptocurrency to buy a cup of coffee or or i don't know or maybe a car or whatever right so i guess as soon as as soon as uh, so for example there are websites like travela.com t r a v a l a.com where you can actually go and buy hotel hotel tickets air tickets against cryptocurrencies right uh, there's also the likes of crypto.com and plenty of crypto debit cards as well that are now being issued against your cryptocurrency holdings so swipe is is another one which is issuing these debit cards i think they are not available at the moment i'm in fact literally Uh, as we speak trying to find that out client of mine uh, as in can he can he get a de- uh, can he get a visa or a master card against his crypto holdings but i think it will happen very soon it's already happened in the us in the european countries in singapore so anywhere outside india let's say you've got uh, a $10000 worth of bitcoin sitting in your crypto wallet you can actually be issued a debit card against it against that holding it's like in the bank if you've got 10000 uh, 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 let's say that's your lack of rupees you have your debit card and you can buy anything it's a visa or a master card or a rupee or whatever but visa and master card have now so apart from paypal right so samak samak mentioned paypal i see it as one of the biggest developments biggest signals that crypto will go mainstream even from a payments perspective but even bigger than that i would say is is visa and mastercard and you guys should google it are now involved knee deep in this as well right they've announced cryptocurrency initiatives the simple one is that if you've got a crypto wallet holding let's say dollars worth of btc you can get issued a debit card against that crypto holding and and as you know a visa or a mastercard works across i don't know what you know 50 million merchants across the world uh, uh, anywhere in india too i believe although i'm very sure whether you can use that visa or mastercard in india but transactions are not an issue anymore you know so all all the all the traditional uh, transaction sort of uh, so the, the, the money is digital right at the end of the day so all the Tra- digital the the traditional transaction channels are being opened up the most obvious ones amongst them being visa mastercard and paypal even square for example in the us is is now doing it robin hood the robin hood app has it as well and i see this as a big trend right i mean if visa and mastercard and paypal are doing it very soon paytm etc will do it as well in india as soon as you've got regulatory clarity right i mean that's what i'm guessing that paytm and the likes are waiting for but uh, as i said in a simplest use case is you can actually get a visa or a mastercard issued against your cryptocurrency holding uh, and and use that anywhere at any of the merchants which accept a visa or or, or a mastercard yeah definitely so thank you so much guys for like this session i i, I know a lot of questions are still there and we uh, guys do, we don't have time to answer all the questions but i would love if you guys reached out to us i i Uh, think samak and atul both are active on twitter or linkedin reach out to them they would be happy to help you i how the, you can reach out to me guys uh, i am available on linkedin or twitter and for more questions you can reach out to us on uh, biocoin info at the rate biocoin or support at the rate biocoin reach out to us on, on twitter uh, it was such a pleasure talking to you guys and the information you gave i Think everybody has enjoyed it and gained a lot of perspective 
on this issue in both terms the, the regulation policy making and we back and stuff of all the cryptocurrencies in india De- definitely uh, samak it's, it's been a great discussion and i look forward to more like these and uh, mr atul it's, it's been lovely interacting with you too the same year samak same year uh, well both both of you are samak actually yeah. i just realized yeah so yeah so thank you to everyone yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. To all the viewers, I will say thank you so much for attending, and we'll be doing these more in the future. And I hope uh, you all enjoyed it and gained a lot of perspective on cryptocurrencies. And reach out to us on Twitter. Reach out to us on LinkedIn. We'll be happy to help you out, guys. So thank you so much. Thank you, Atul and Samak. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.